not a YouTuber just like making videos and this video here is going to be a response to a video that new possibilities new possibilities my man published on on April April 9th and his video was a, a reaction to uh, uh, your vet Carnell her video black is king and making a mess of our lineage and so forth and um, I guess new possibilities um, like his tempers was flared because your vet Carnell uh, spoke out against you know what I'm saying I guess she had a problem with Beyonce's uh, project black is king by myself I've I, I, um, I've never seen black is king so I can't uh, make a fair assessment of it but you know what I'm saying uh, new possibilities went and called her the dreaded C word, uh, coon. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't even know what the word coon means anymore. I'm like, we're just, I'm like, you know, just because somebody disagrees with you on what direction black people should take, I don't think, I'm like, I'm like, that's taking a little bit overboard. I'm like, but, you know, I don't know what a coon is anymore. You know, we use that word to that word is tossed around like a two dollar hooker at an Alaskan pipeline. I'm like words like coon and nigger. I'm like we tend to uh, cling on to these disparaging words, these demeaning wo demeaning words and terms that white people refer to us as. I'm like it's to the point where we we need to start thanking the white man for giving giving us these words. Why can't we come up with new words? But as Tariq Nasheed would say, I digress. Now, um, also uh, new possibilities went on sort of a tangent against the whole uh, Eidos movement. Now, I saw your vet's video and, um, you know what I'm saying, I meant your vet can be hard to watch sometimes because she tend to talk in circles and take too long to get to the point you know there's a whole lot of idle chat you know but I guess people could say this about me but what I uh, from what I gather a vet was hesitant to go in on the black is king but she um, was uh, talking about uh, other criticisms of, of the project uh, supposedly some Africans stated that it was cultural pro appropriation so therefore, I guess that put the battery in Yvette's back, you know, to do what she did. And, um, you know, new possibilities went in. He, he, he uh, was praising Black is King and this whole idea that Black people, our history didn't start it with slavery. Um, true, you know what I'm saying? Very true. Um, but slavery was an interruption. Yes, I'm like, but slavery was one hell of an interruption. It's not like me watching TV and somebody knocks on the door and that, that interrupts me. I'm like, it's like me watching TV and I'm interrupted because I don't know, somebody bombed my house. Uh, slavery was an interruption that just changed the course of, of history. But our history isn't the same as a lot of black people in Africa. A lot of black people in Africa um, if you want to consider them black, um, s slavery is not in their uh, history textbooks. It didn't affect them. And I understand about the African diaspora having one common goal, one common enemy, and so forth. That if the white man was ev was ever to reach out to East Africa, you know, places like Eritrea, Ethiopia, Sudan that he would enslave them too, that they would have been part of the transatlantic slave trade if he could have got his, uh, uh, hand, his hands a hold of them. But of course the white men later around the 1930s, 1940s uh, went and colonized uh, a lot of Africa and so forth and drained their resources. And this is why we have to have this pan-African movement because uh, our brothers and sisters everywhere were suffering abroad. So, so I get it. I'm like, um, one of my favorite uh, Pan-Africanists, um, uh, somebody who helped started the movement back in the 1960s, 
Now, I think the 1970s was Randall Robertson. Uh, Randall Robertson has done excellent work abroad. I'm like, he has, uh, you know, some done work in Haiti. I've read a lot of his books. You know, he even re he written uh, Unbroken Agony, The Debt, What America Owes Blacks. You know, even though he, he's Pan-African, he has a book, uh, an excellent book about uh, reparations and so forth. I'm like, he's been, I'm like, he helped get Nelson Mandela out of jail over there in uh, South Africa. And some people may critique him and says, oh man, uh, also Randall Robertson also staged the protest in Harvard because he said Harvard has um, invested in uh, oil, African oil, which has caused conflict in Africa, especially with these Portuguese people and a country called Angolia and so forth. So, but some people said, well, uh, what has Randall Robertson done? Randall Robertson is doing all this what has he done for black people here in America? I think he's done a lot. Um, you know what I mean? But yeah, he's um, he's definitely Pan-African. And when I think about Randall Robertson, I'm like, he's um, a tall, fairly light-skinned black American. So when he goes over to Haiti and South Africa, he's at somewhat a privileged, at a privileged position. Here's a black man black American who's Harvard educated. You know what I'm saying? He's not going to face the kind of difficulties, you know, negotiating with, you know, white people in South Africa is as of a poor South African. You know, so he has to be the representative and uh, he's not going to face that sort of uh, wrath that when a poor South African want to stick his chest up to the white men, you know what I'm saying, the Afrikaners there and so forth. You know what I mean? Just like him being a Harvard-educated man uh, prancing around in, in Haiti and so forth. But I have to give him props for, uh, you know, the work he's done. Um, but, but also, um, can we relate? Can we relate to Africans? And not just relate from a textbook or a video or... Um, uh, on a literal, can we relate on a literal basement basis and so forth? And, um, a sh shout out to my boy OJ Duke Jackson. OJ Jackson is somebody that back in the days people have sort of referred to him as a coon because because he had these conservative views, staunch criticisms of the black community, and um, he he was um, I guess a pupil of David Carl. But you know this brother is out there in Africa doing his his own damn he's doing his damn thing. You know we talk about it. He's out, out out there in Africa making his money. So power to him. Um, but when we think about it, I'm like we've had we we got um, sometimes our interactions with Africans have been a little uh, foggy. You know, there's this belief that Africans look down on us and so forth. Now, I remember a liberal friend of mine, he got into a taxi cab. You know, he was a white guy. He got into a taxi cab and he was just talking about how this African cab driver was just ragging on black people. And um, he said he stepped up and uh, you know what I'm saying, had to you know defend this like a good liberal white man would. <laughs> and um, that's the reality, you know what I'm saying, that's the reality for, uh, you know what I'm saying, these, I'm like, it doesn't surprise me. You know, we hear about um, uh, people being denied taxi cabs, um, black, black people. Um, I think there was some African online made a post and referred to black people as wild dogs because, you know what I'm saying, we don't have a culture and a lot of Africans, you know what I'm saying, they have a strong family uni unit, um, they have a strong culture, that's why they come over here and open businesses. As far as the Nigerians, they say the Nigerians have a, uh, the house, the average household is worth um, one one hundred thousand dollars because of they believe in education. That's why a lot of Nigerians are doctors and scientists and so forth. And uh, and they may look at black people, 
and see like why are they lagging behind are they squandering the opportunities you know or people say that black they claim black people here in america is are is poor but you know what i'm saying you go over to africa go to other countries and you're going to see exactly what real poverty is and um you know what i'm saying black people we have our and i'm not saying these africans point of view is right and i'm like africa has has a whole lot of problems some people say if they were so smart why don't they stay in their own country and fix their problems but i guess that um if everybody embraces pan-africanisms you know what i'm saying we can all get along all hold hands and have a common enemy but that may be you know what I'm saying that's not practical because still everybody has their own history now as the white man the white man has oppressed a lot of people you know what I'm saying with a darker hue uh, even the Indians you know the Indians over there in uh, uh, India you know what I'm saying where you have Mahatma Gandhi and we know the Indians <laughs> aren't particularly fond of us you know some people say the Indians are actually making uh, uh, race relations worse here in America and they're looked at as the model minority because they come over here and uh, uh, you know make a way for themselves and black people are still stuck in a rough complaint. But us black people, we have, and that's why I feel that the, uh, the um, oh, Eidos movement is sort of important because it's about us focusing in on us. And um, a lot of black people, their Eidos and may not even know it. Like this is the mentality a lot of blacks had uh, way back when. I can tell you right now that my father is Eidos. My father would be like, man, I'm from Alabama. You know what I'm saying? My my ancestors grew up uh, uh, farming and picking cotton and so forth. I don't know nothing about. Shit, I don't know nothing about no motherfucking Africa. I'm from motherfucking Cedar Block, nigga. You know what I mean? Africa ain't never fed my block. Hey, what up, pinhead? You funny looking motherfucker. I don't know Africa. You know, you can say that, you know what I'm saying? One of the uh, Pookie and Ray Rays are Eidos. They're like, hey man, I'm from the block. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm from Brightwood and so forth, man. I don't know nothing about any Africa and, and all that other junk. So, um, we we do need to focus things here there's nothing wrong with focus, focusing on home and you know what I'm saying, and waking our people up you know what i'm saying and then going out and getting what's uh uh what we deserve you know new possibilities stated that you know what i'm saying you're begging for for scraps at the white man's table um you know what i'm saying this same white man that has put you under jim crow laws Austronize you, galvanize you, chastise you, and so forth. But as Paul Mooney said, everybody comes back for their money. You know, it's like people who worked at a company that builds a company, and um, you know what I'm saying. And they came up with creative ideas for this company to grow and prosper, and so forth. And they're not getting a fair share. And they're like, hey, you know what I'm saying? This is owed to us, even if we leave the company. We want part stake in here. We want at least 50% or 60% of the residuals. Also, um, your vet Cornell had a problem with Black is King because she says, "Oh, we don't. We need to get past that King stuff. We need warriors and soldiers to fight. This isn't about begging the white man. It's more so demanding. You know what I'm saying? What is owed from the white man and so forth. I also want to touch up on." Um, also, new possibilities touched on that, you know what I'm saying, the white man cherishes his lineage to Europe. So, why is it that black people want to somehow um, not acknowledge or recognize their African lineage? Um, he has a point, but the white man did craft him a culture for himself here in America. You know what I'm saying? I've lived in Europe for uh, four years in Germany, and uh, yeah, the, a white American and a white European is sort of uh, indifferent. I'm like here in America, the white man he loves his American flag. There, I'm like patronism is almost like a religion within itself. 
I'm like, you go over to other countries. When I was in Germany, I didn't even know. It took me two years to know what the German flag or the Deutsch flag is. Because they don't have their flag waving all in front of their porches. They don't have their flag all attached to their cars and so forth. You know what I'm saying? There is no 4th of July <laughs> over there. You know, here, uh, the white American likes his good old-fashioned chili dog. Um, but his barbecue, his 10-gallon hat, which he got from the Mexicans. And, you know what I'm saying, sitting back watching NASCAR on Sundays. You know, things, you know. Uh, so, you know, in Europe, Europeans look at Americans as kind of like loud and disrespectful. And the white man here... I'm saying he's not really concerned with modern Euro European politics. You know, um, you know there was a time when uh, uh, we had a Cold War against Russia. I'm like, that's you know, what I'm saying that's white people ready to go to war with other white people. Some people say the Cold War was was exaggerated and it was nothing more than a bloated cow, but. The reason why we have army bases all over Europe, especially in the 80s and the 90s, is just in case something jump off. Something jump off with the East Germans, something ju ju jump off with the Russians, the Czechoslovakians. That, yeah, we was right there. We was right there locked and loaded. You know, and um, Pan-Africanists, they can't, they can't fathom, you know, blacks, you know what I'm saying, um, uh, going to war with Africa or, or something like that. I'm like, that is absolutely that. That's like self hate, you know. What I'm saying, oh, the white man, he self engineered you to, to to go at, you know, what I'm saying to go to war with your brothers and so forth. And also, the reason why there has been like a disconnect between, um, you know, what I'm saying another disconnect between black people and Africans, um, or maybe some animosity. You know, some of it is through media. I remember when Paul Mooney stated that the Africans did not send over one boat to, to get their people. And he said that the Africans want to, want to 400 years later, they want to appear in New York and want to sell me a watch. But um, I don't want this video to be too long. I, I may make a second video or a third video um, really elaborated because this is a deep topic. But thanks for watching and never stop learning.